Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Theurgy, a game by the Ministry of Meeples, and one that may sound familiar because it was already on Kickstarter and, well, that Kickstarter ended. In fact, the pledge manager for this game is ending in roughly two weeks, I believe June 30th, so if you want to jump in on this game, now is the time to do so. I'm reviewing this one now because while I had the opportunity to play it during the actual campaign, I didn't get an actual prototype until after the campaign, hence this video. And, by the way... I'll be covering the how to play, but then I will be doing the actual what we liked, didn't like, and can see others not liking, together with William from The Hungry Gamer, who apparently, this is his favorite area control game, or more specifically, possibly his favorite area control game. Now, Theurgy is going to be a game of area control. It has a solo, a competitive, and they've recently unlocked in the Pledge Manager, they've unlocked in the most recent update, a cooperative mode as well that the, the backers all voted on after the fact and got it in the, you know, post-campaign. The game is going to be area control with four actions. The goal of the game ultimately is to build your temples. You are trying to build temples on the board. That's all you're trying to do. The nuance of that is you win the game. Let's pretend we're playing a three or four player game. It will vary. They have handy dandy, amazing player aids that basically have the entire game on your player aids. And you win in a three-player game, either by having seven temples anywhere on the board, period, or alternatively by having six temples as long as one of them matches your objective. So, for instance, my objective over here is one temple must not be adjacent to any other temple, all by its lonesome. Or alternatively, by having five temples, including one in the capital, ensuring that the capital will be one of the most contested spots in the game because you can win a whole temple earlier than everyone else assuming you have your temple there and others do not. Past that, the game is going to be one of four different actions on your turn. You can take one of four different actions, and whatever action you took last, you have to ensure that you take a different action. So you always have a choice of three actions from a smorgasbord. Well, you just have one action. One action from three from four total, if that makes sense. What are those actions? Those actions are going to be pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is going to be wrong player board. The action is going to be pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is where you're going to move your cubes and accolades around the board. Now, moving cubes will be overwhelming. Let's not deal with that right now. It'll become more evident late game as to why you want to move your followers around the board. Early game, don't overthink it. But you'll be moving your accolades around the board, moving your accolades, and then converting followers where you move. Like I said, you could still move cubes. Let's say we move two over there. And this one's actually going to go ahead and move all three over here. And then you're going to go ahead and convert accolades, convert other cubes where you stand. So over here, we're going to go ahead and convert one of those cubes. And then try to turn into one of ours and do the same over here. We are converting the gray neutral followers to ours. Uh, from there, the other action you kick in your turn... Let's have purple do that. Is going to be divine intervention. Divine intervention is where you either play a miracle. You're going to have the hand of three miracles. You can play one and then choose to either keep or discard the rest, drawing back up to three. So let's see over here. We're going to go ahead and do through the mirror. We're going to go ahead and straight up add four cubes of your color to this hex. And we're going to go ahead and add four of these to, let's say, this hex over here. And then we're going to go ahead and discard. We'll keep this one. We like this one. But we'll discard these and pick that up. That's not the only option you have for Divine Intervention. Divine Intervention could alternatively be utilizing a monster. So you can build up a slow a slow growth of monster abilities in this game because what you can do is you can activate all your monster abilities and then grab another monster. So you're doing both of those. You're going to have the more monsters you gather, the more you're going to benefit from taking that monster action. So building up a strong Divine Intervention tableau full of more and more monsters taking monster abilities can be a strong way to slowly creep through this game. Now, you will have to build temples to win, but you can cause a lot of destruction and mayhem along the way. From there, we'll go back to red. Red's going to go ahead and take the option spread the word. What they're going to go ahead and do is they're going to add one of these tokens to the intersection of a tile, where ideally they have the most presence, where they can add it anywhere, but you can replace someone's someone else's token if you have more followers than they do. In this case, there are no tokens to replace, so we're just going to go ahead and let's say we're going to add this over here. Okay, going back to purple, and we're playing a three-player game, I'm just showing you the actions. Uh, the last action is Test of Faith, but we're not going to do that just yet. I want to carry out a few more things first. We're going to go ahead and take Pilgrimage with this one over here, and we're going to move all our tokens over here. So we're going to go ahead and move all our tokens over here like so. We're going to go back to red. Red's going to do a Divine Intervention action. They're also going to go ahead and play one of these cards. They will do, ooh, let's see, you may reactivate, nope, nope, move each faith token, nope, we're going to go ahead and play an opposing accolade on, place an opposing accolade on any hex on its side, so they're going to go ahead and lay down an accolade, we'll go ahead and lay down black, and they're going to go ahead and discard these cards, draw up to three, and then back to purple, where I'm going to show you how spread the ward can be even more impactful, we're going to go ahead and take sp uh, spread the ward over here, where we're going to go ahead and replace this token over here because we have more followers. So what they're going to do is you're going to look at the total followers that surround this, which means you look here, here, and here, and then try to conquer that particular token over there. In which, in this case, because we have more, we're going to go ahead and replace it with our own. This game can be incredibly brutal and cutthroat. 
And then lastly, well, we're going to go ahead and take a pilgrimage action. We're going to move over here and turn one of these into mine and move over here and turn one of these into mine just for the sake of, of doing something over here. And then finally, we're going to take test the faith. Test the faith is how you're going to raise temples in the game. Everything else you do is all set up to the idea that you need to raise and build temples in order to, in order to win at theurgy. And so that and what you're going to do is you're going to look at any spot. What you're going to do is you're going to convert all tokens at a spot based on what you have over here. So for example, we're going to go ahead and construct a temple over here. We're going to look at the fact that I have two of my tokens to the neutral one, which means I'm going to start by converting one of the neutrals to mine. You'll always convert from each sect equal to the difference between those sects. Had orange, had red, had one there as well. That one also would have been converted to mine as well. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Mine is relative in both purple and red in this situation. And then when you're done doing all the conversions, measuring each player against each other from all the intersections of their tokens, you're going to go ahead and raise a temple for whoever has the most tokens there, whoever has the most followers at that spot is going to result in raising a temple. If you ever, and then you're going to move this token over here, where a temple cannot be raised again until that token moves. So you can never have the same spot moving immediately back and forth. I say back and forth because later, once this does move over here and red constructs a temple over there, you're going to go ahead and move it back. You can, you can have someone moving a temple back if they have enough presence. Let's say we move all these out and we have a whole bunch of of tokens that are just in the board over there. We have a whole bunch of red ones that get added later, and then red can go ahead and test the faith, and they can go ahead and move this one down on its side, erecting their own temple over there, leaving purple with half a point worth of temples. So the game is always going to creep slowly towards an end, because even as you build temples, and even as they are destroyed by other players, you will still be left with at least half a point on the board, considered the runes of the temple. That is basically theurgy. Take one of four different actions. Those actions are going to be moving around the board, creating followers. Uh, alternatively, you're going to be spreading the word to put your tokens on those various vertices. You're going to be doing divine intervention for all the powers and abilities in the games, the row of monsters, as well as the cards and abilities, and then test the faith the ultimate moment where you're going to try to erect a temple, do that a minimum of five times, perhaps more depending on the situation, the board, whether your temples get knocked over and all of that. And that is basically going to be a game of the theology. And with that, uh, join myself and William of the Hungry Gamer as we go through our thoughts on this game. And joining me for the review part of this video, we have William from the Hungry Gamer who, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he said something along the lines of, I'm going to come out and say this bluntly, this is possibly my favorite area control game that I have ever played. Is that Does that sound like you? That does, it does. I mean, you know, you didn't have the the, the beautiful baritone that, that I have, mm. but you know. Wait, let, me, let me try again. Let me try. Yeah. I'm going to come out and say this bluntly, this is possibly my favorite area control game that I have ever played. It was like listening to a mirror. That, that mm. was right beautiful. on. Beautiful. I think I got it. But yes, I did say that, and I still stand by it. So so with that said, so let's go ahead and jump into the usual the for, for the usual format. The what I liked, didn't like, or what we liked, didn't like, and can see others not liking. And to that end, this is your possibly, not for sure, this is possibly your favorite area control game. So what did you like about this game? Uh, the speed of it. It is so much faster than your uh, Lords of Hellas, or, or heck, even Root. And I like Root. But it's faster than that. I really like the action selection, that that kind of scythe style, you know, yep. just mo moving around. I like that. But mostly, it's because I think they nailed the theme so hard. They did to the extent, by the way, to the extent that after playing it for the first time, I asked the designer. I was like, by the way, there's like out of curiosity, like, are you religious? Because they really, they really have that feel of, of your followers, your acolytes raising temples. And he's not, by the way, for for context. But it was, I just, I felt they. It wasn't like a typical slapped on. Hey, this is Cyclades, and there's gods and stuff. It was. It really felt like they nailed the theme. I completely. Yeah, agree. it's funny because we we asked the exact same thing when when I played. I reached out to play with somebody else. So like, oh, so like, then we got to play another game with him, and we and he said, "Where did this come from?" He said, "Oh, it was when I was in uh, university, England from England." So they say university. You know, when I was in university, they were like, "Oh, you, were you studying theology?" He's, just, he's like, "No, math." I'm like. What? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's from the blue, but I, I agree with you as well. The the simple, well, the, actually, length didn't factor into my opinion. Although you're right, it is definitely does hit that sweet spot. But overall, I love the the simple to teach the the four actions. That's it. That's all it is. Four actions, and they're really simple actions. Simpler than the actions from Scythe. They're just you know do one of four things, and then those four things all cascade into one another. And you have to switch from your prior action and make sure you choose that. And you're always trying to figure out this this puzzle. And I, I love games in general that give you that aspect of you want to do everything first 
so that the follow-up action will be stronger. But if you do it in this order, then that action will be stronger. If you do it in this order, then that action will be stronger. And everything is constantly cascading into a stronger, more powerful action. But you're just trying to do it as efficiently and quickly and ideally as possible. Yeah, and the the other, uh, well, not the other thing, many things. One of the others I, I really enjoy is the the difference between the different gods that you're playing and just those tiny yeah. little power differences really changes how you're going to approach the game. Like if you're playing the the, the blue god, like you're just all over the map. Whereas if you're the red god, you're not going to move as much, but you're going to have this giant plague of red death everywhere all over the all over the board. It just, it, it really, really, I think that works. And then the other thing that I love is when you're doing the, uh, uh, the, the test of faith and you're yes. making these temples, there's the moment in every game when you you can't do anything, but I can look across the table and I can be like, Alex has a temple over there and there are some non-believers over there. I, can, I could just go blow up his temple for spite, which just... It's a it's a, not a really nice look on you, honestly. But but I I agree. The tightness, the 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 game is incredibly tight and simple in what it's trying to do. It's basically it's four actions plus powers and abilities. And powers and abilities I like already. I like the asymmetric gods, like you said already. I like the monsters, the the, the powers, the miracles, all those things that just give you different twists on what is otherwise an incredibly simple streamlined gameplay. And that streamlined gameplay is mean to boot. It has those elements, those aspects of of well, I mean, you said spite. I don't I don't know if I want to play games with you anymore. But it. Definitely definitely has that aspect of finding the person who's winning you target that person not out of spite but out of desire it's to a just loving raise yourself spite. Up. it's a loving, a loving spite, spite. You yeah, know, you, I mean, honestly, maybe you would make for a good god in this game. Maybe this is why you like the game so much. You're like <laughs> yeah, okay. spiteful I see myself lovingness. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I think it's uh, uh Yeah, it's just it's just really really tight and everything about it and it just it doesn't It's one of those the few games that I've played that I read it, read the rules, and I, I almost always sit down and I'll, I'll play against myself first so I can then teach somebody. And I finished playing and I was like, was that really good? Did I really like that? I shouldn't like this. I don't like area control games. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to set this back up. I'm going to do it again. And I played like three times. And I said, no, I think this is actually good. All right, I'm going to get someone else in here. And we <laughs> played with them and they said, yeah, that's good. I was like, okay, it doesn't sound like me. What's going on? And then, you know, I, I got to hold on to the prototype for over a year before they relaunched. And it was like my fourth most played game of Ooh, the year last for year. Prototype, that's impressive. Yeah, it just kept coming out um, uh, when they because then they put out the the AIs that are still tinkering with Do a little bit. You currently but... have a prototype? No, no. Does I don't. that mean I, I need I... to send this guy back to you as soon as we're done? Oh, I hope so. I can happily do that, of course. Yes, I I I need that back, especially. I I wonder if you have mine with the uh, the printed AIs in there. I don't. I don't know. I'll have to check it out later. I'll see. But either way, so so yeah, so I, I agree on all those all those counts. Uh, it, it's simple. It's elegant. It's streamlined. It's quick to teach, quick to play. It has tight action selection. Everything else is cohesive and works together to deliver a an experience where you constantly want to do something. Well, so you can do something else, but you're doing it more efficiently than other players as you go through this game. Which I mean, let's say anything else. I, I cover what we like. Do you want to move on to the next section? Yeah, yeah. You know, I have a good one that I, I'll end with because it's something that I like. But I can also see people being like, ah, I don't like that. Sure. That's the monster play. Okay. Because you got to go deep with the monsters to really be effective with them. And they're so Every tempting. Every time you get a monster, you activate all the rest. Yep. It's so tempting to get like one. And if you're just getting one monster, you're just wasting your time. And then you feel like, I'm not doing anything good. So you, you got to go deep with the monsters. But monsters are so fragile. It's so yep. easy to kill them, which is great, but if you go down that route, it's fun. You have a tableau you're making, but it's very easy to blow up. And so yep. you know, that that's – I know some people I played with just like, I hate I hate the monsters. I was like, well, that's because you're not playing well with them, you know? Well, so I don't so. hate the monsters, but that is a good tangent to starting off with the things I didn't like in the game, which is I don't mind the monster play to begin with, but I didn't I, – I love powers and abilities. I really do. But what's interesting about Theurgy, more so than other area control games I have, is I would say, I'd have to look at all of them, but I think it feels most like an abstract game compared to anything else that anything else in my area control collection. It feels like you're trying to min-max around different actions and take different 
area control aspects of because of because of the aspect of, of testing the faith of of locating your your tokens around the board so you can have the most efficient action. It feels very area control in the setup and implementation of it. So it feels very abstract in the setup and implementation of it. But that does mean that the monsters and miracles, as much as I love them, to a certain extent, they take away from the abstract purity more than I would like. Theogy, to me, is a game that is a delightful, abstract, puzzly experience with min-maxing and all that. And then the powers and abilities are just all over the place to the extent that it completely befuddles that streamlined experience. I like the powers and abilities, but it's a little bit over the top for me. Yeah, and, and, it, and it can be the... I think the other, the biggest question about those is sometimes you can feel like you're clogged. You know, you got the monsters out there that aren't useful or you have your hand of miracles and it is so hard to say, you know what? I'm going to play a miracle just to throw all these away to get something something new. So, But because they're so varied, you, you can feel kind of stuck. And that's interesting you say that it's, it's kind of abstracted because the theme is so solid, yet at the same time, a lot of these miracles, it is about, it just becomes a numbers game. Yeah. You know, um, but that's wow, that's deep. Which you perfectly hit on my second point. I only had two things I didn't like. My first was that that perhaps over the top abilities, but my second point was exactly what you just said, which is the miracles are are good, but I do think the miracles are not always consistently good. There are some miracles that are inherently better than others, and combine that aspect that some miracles you could be left with a dead hand. There have been times in this game, multiple times, where I had to literally give up an action just so I could play a miracle, just so I could discard them all, and draw back up. And that, by far, is the least satisfying moments that I have ever had in Theurgy. It's that turn where you have to just take one for the team, give up a turn, do like a barely efficient action, because... I need new miracles. I need new stuff. It is yep. the most frustrating experience that I have when playing this game. Yeah, and it's the one thing that when I, I'll be playing with someone new sometimes, and that's what I'll say. I'll you know, like, ah, these miracles. I'm like, just burn them now. Yeah. Just pull off the Band-Aid, do it now, and you'll be fine. <laughs> but it, but it's even worse when you sit there like, I'm going to do jumping out because I don't want to do yeah. this. And then you just, it builds and builds and builds. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that there is that. And the only other thing else, well, I will say before thing. we go there, this is a good time to remind people that, said this already in the beginning, but a good time to remind people that this is very much a prototype and all this feedback, at least on my end, has been conveyed already. I don't know what isn't isn't being taken advantage of or, to, or I don't know what isn't isn't being changed, but prototype, so who knows. Yeah, I do know that uh, even from my, when I first saw it, I actually did two videos on it. One right after the first, end of their yeah. first Kickstarter ended. And then I came back in after a bunch of they put out the the AIs and they redid a whole bunch of the cards and a bunch of the powers. So I, it's possible that powers and uh, monsters that you actually have behind you have actually already been changed depending on when this prototype was printed. So they're they're they, they're pretty pretty responsive to the, the to those kinds of things. Um, the the other thing that gets me it it's a there's a lot of cubes. There's a lot of cubes. I mean, they're gonna be they're gonna be tiny little meeple dudes, um, which will be cute. But it's a lot. I mean, yeah. don't you dare hit that table. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But there there are yeah. There's there's a lot going on there. I mean, for me, well, we'll cover it more in the what other because the other's not liking. I do have more things that didn't necessarily bother me, including the sheer amount of cubes. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah. Well, I, I'm ready to move into what what. Uh, uh, so what would the, you see others not liking then? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. And this is the general category of, of things that didn't bother me, things that I'm not concerned with, but they might be a reason why Theurgy is not a game for you. And, and starting off, there's, and this is not really necessarily what you meant by the lot of cubes, but there is an overwhelming amount of options in this game, and there's lots of math and counting. This game could be very AP prone, a very analysis paralysis prone. Yeah. The idea that I mean, that's like the most basic idea, that movement action where you're going to be moving your acolytes around the board and you could also move every single one of your cubes. And that's like mind boggling. And for what it's worth, if you haven't played this game yet, I recommend not ever moving a cube until it feels clearly obvious that you should do so. You will get stuck in your head of, I, I can move everything. I, I can move everything. What do, what do I want to do Everything can move six directions. Yes, it's insanity. It's absolute <laughs> insanity. What you want to do is you want to wait, unless you're, of course, maybe you're like a triple A level player that may be thinking, I don't know. But what you want to do, at least what I've been doing, is towards the end game, the opportunities and reasons to move cubes will start to open up and develop. Early game, don't think about it too much. Just move what you think makes sense and let the strategy develop as you play the game. But there, again, 
every single cube on the board can move when you take a move action and it can move in six different directions. That is boggling. Combine that with the the monsters, combine that with the miracles, this game can be overwhelming in what it's doing. Yeah, and for something that has four actions, yeah. I'll say four and a half because you do a miracle, you got a choice of two things, right? Amazing amount of stuff that can happen with just... They make it sound easy. Oh, there's just four actions. There's a ton. Yeah. <laughs> Bazillions. Um yeah, the uh, yeah that is kind of kind of along with by, by so many cubes is move, move, moving all those around. Uh, the only one I got that I throw out there is is mean. There is nothing remotely nice about this game. We you Alex and I we're gonna be working together because you know Sam over there God, freaking Sam can't stand Sam. Sam's the worst. Uh, is, is winning and we will bring him down and smash him into dust and tear down his temples. And then the moment it As looks like should. I'm winning. Alex is right there with Sam, tearing down my temples with no remorse. It's just so, so mean. That's literally my second bullet point is not mean, but specifically pull down the leader. It very much does have pull down the leader. Now, again, it goes into the what I can see others not liking because I only mind pull down the leader if I feel it is so ridiculously overpowered that it almost breaks the game. And I don't feel that way here. No. It does mean that you have to prepare for the win. It does mean that you have to be all confident you can lock that win. And when you go for that final sprint, because if you aren't, then people will be targeting you. And then, like you said already, once we're done taking care of Sam, you know, we'll team up and go against somebody else and somebody else will end up sneaking in that win. It very much does have that target aspect of tearing down people's points trying to take them out of the running of the game which is makes for a delightful meaty mean and vindictive and spiteful experience now i'm starting to sound like you but might make theurgy a game that isn't for yeah, you yeah i mean you know and it also it adds to the complexity a little bit because some of my yes. favorite games i've played is when uh, actually my favorite when i played just where i sent it off was i jumped out to a very early lead and got pounded into the dust so far that they forgot about me and I was able to come back and win because I had, I don't know, I think I had eight destroyed temples out there. And for uh, which, as you explained earlier, you know, a destroyed yeah. temple still worth half a point. Yeah. So even when you're being killed, you're still slowly progressing to the end. But it's suddenly that extra bit of strategy. That's in there. So, OK, I've been crushed. That's OK. Now I have to just slowly and carefully and as uh, inoffensively as I can creep back up there where they don't notice me until it's until it's over. Um, One of my favorite comics I've ever seen about board games is that gaming is 20% strategy and 80% trying to convince the other players you're not winning. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's a, no, no, no. Or, you know, and the 5% that, no, it's, it's him yeah. that's winning, you know. <laughs> find, find, find the person. But, uh, yeah, it's it, it's definitely mean. I mean, it's, I'm going to say, I think it is the meanest area control game I've played. And I'm going to put it up there with Root. A six-person game of Root is nasty. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think about it. It's definitely mean. Is it the meanest? It might be. It does have... Cyclades can be mean. I don't I don't know. I'd have to think about it. It definitely does have a bit of a vindictive feel when you get in people's ways, especially the way you spread the, the way you spread anything from, the, from the, the neutral influence, from the way you take down people's points. There's a lot of things you can do. The monsters, there's lots of ways to mess with people in theory. It might be up there. And well, and everything you're doing is taking from somebody. Like yeah. I'm literally, I am taking your follower and making it mine. Like it's not, I didn't kill your follower. No, I converted it. And now you will always see that follower that used to be yours and know that no, now it's mine. And like just, it's all suffused in there of, of this nastiness. And now, now that we're talking about it, it might be because the game's quicker than most area controls that it feels meaner. Because the meanness Could is happening much, much more, more, more rapidly. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a nice fight in the phone book. Or in a phone book. Wow, knife fight in a phone. Yeah, please. Knife fight, fight in a phone book. Those are tough. Those are really small. I mean, that, that, that is that's really mean. <laughs> uh, for those of us who are intelligent, a knife fight in a phone booth is what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. So, so if those are the things we can see others not liking, and those that's what covers that. So, final thoughts. Uh, first of all, do you rate games? I don't know if you rate games officially. Um, you know, I used to give them scores, but it's so hard to give number scores because what's the rating? You know, yep. uh, we used to do one at the uh, where I uh, post articles and it was, you know, 7.5 was on their scale is a good game. And I put something out there, 7.5, and just people exploded. Like, how could you give it a C? I'm like, I didn't. Think of it like baseball. If you're batting 750, you're amazing. 
Um, yeah, my rating system. So I agree with you in general, which is why my rating system in general is ones are bad games, twos are games that aren't for me for one reason or another, uh, threes are just good games. Most games are threes. Fours are great games, and fives are oh my freaking gosh, I never want that game leaving my collection. Games. Uh, it keeps it localized to just basically four bands because I don't really cover ones. Ones are rarely ever a thing for me. It's really two threes and fours and fives. Four simple bands lets me cover most of what I want with enough nuance to be relevant, but not so much that I'm agonizing over the fact that that game I rated a 7.8, well, now the 7.4 I actually think is better in the end of the day. So, oh, that's embarrassing yeah. for you. But I can, I can horror. use your scale. I got it. It's so, internalized. final thoughts and rating then. All right, so I'm going to add in that they have added or are working on a co-op mode, which yes. was funny because the, the, the first – I get to claim a little credit for this. The first genesis of the idea was I taught Mark Dainty over at Not Board Gaming how to play because he was reviewing it. We played it together, and we were just getting waxed by the AI. I was like, you think we could beat it together? I was like, I don't know. So we just did it root style, and we barely beat it together. I mean we were just getting waxed. The AI is very, very hard in this game. At least some of them are. But with the solo AI, which, which I really enjoy, mostly because you can then also play a two-player game and make it a three-player game. That's the other thing I should have said as a something that might bother you. You can get a runaway uh, winner in a two-player game. Yeah. Because if you're getting smashed down, you do need someone to help you come back. But with the, the bot and now with the co-op mode, it's a five for me. It, it will not leave my collection once it comes back um, without a doubt. Without a doubt, unless Solid. they do something horrible as people, and then of course it's got to go. But yeah, well, yeah, obviously, uh, for me this one's a four to five. I really like the UG. I like it a lot. The, the thing that stops it from being a five for me is, like I touched upon already, uh, not so much the hand of non-relevant miracles. While that's frustrating, it is localized to singular moments, so I can get over that. Uh, the thing that stops it from being short of being a five is it does very much have that hybrid of abstract and Ameritrash combined that have me always a little bit off key in theurgy. It is simultaneously the most elegant game of taking one action to power the next and it's such a strong euro or abstract in that experience and then it throws in all these monsters powers and abilities and miracles that i love i love that stuff in games but it ends up feeling just a little bit like it's trying to branch off into two different camps and leaves me with a drop short of a a perfect lane of what it's trying to be still a great game four is nothing to be uh, nothing to be ashamed of but uh, just that that's the thing that keeps it from being a five for me i really enjoy and you know and i think for me that's probably what pushes it up because i have been learning i love me a hybrid game yeah so i so like hybrids. Much, I, I, I don't know i don't know what it is like the general concept of chemists cyclades and issues are all hybrids i don't know what it is necessarily that has this one i think it's more the abstract than the euro thing i don't I don't have a firm finger on it. It's it's a great game. Solid game. Easy recommendation for anyone who likes area control, anyone who likes conflict, powers and abilities, all those different things. And uh, uh, very cool for first-time designers, too. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that. Yes, absolutely. Knocked it out yeah. of the park. For, for, for first time, they didn't come close funding their first time and came back and just crushed it. I don't I don't remember what the thing the percentage was, but it's way up there. And I believe they're opening late pledges soon. Uh, late pledges are already open. They are closing, I believe, June thirtieth. So we have uh, oh. you have two weeks roughly to um to back this game before before you have to hope there's a second Kickstarter because because uh, that's that's basically it. two two weeks two weeks plus. Yeah. Yeah. So do it now. Yeah. Do it now. And so that with that but, uh, that is our review of, of Three G uh, with me joining again with William from the Hungry Gamer. I'll have a link to his channel down below as well as to his two videos where he's already raved about this game and was so excited and eager to rave about it for a third time that he's over here uh, talking about one of his. And I even have a how to play video. Do you out. really? I have a full in depth how to play video out there. I like, like it's like in the poor man's Rodney Smith, <laughs> the homeless man's Rodney Smith. So here. I'll throw a link to that down as well. Uh, but that I got every, I got everything you want. All the stuff um, about this one thing. I know nothing about anything. Do else you have a game. solo how to play? I have mm. a solo playthrough. Mm. So you have a solo playthrough. You have a how to play and you have two reviews. And now this, I, I yeah, I do. I do. So um, I think people I, can... I will say that that first review I don't recommend it because that's the old angles, the old camera, the old sound. Excellent. I'll throw that one as a top link. Nice. Perfect. Oh, see, that's the that's spite, the spite. rubbed off. So, <laughs> oh, so that's fair. That's fair. Uh, so that's basically it. Until next time, I'm Alex. And I'm William. And have a good one.